people say, well, oh, well, you know, I got to, well, I'm not as fucked up as that person, or I'm not, you know, th those aren't my type of people. If you're an alcoholic or a drug user, a drug addict, and you want to get sober, those are your type of people. Poach sat down with Chef Gabriel Rucker of Le Pigeon and Canard in the Portland, Oregon area to discuss community as an integral part of staying sober in the service industry. Rucker plays a large role within Ben's Friends, a sober community for the service industry to discuss its unique hardships. It's an honor to meet with you today. Thank you. Um, well, I'm sure that most people are pretty familiar with um, your career, but just in case, uh, can you give a quick overview of your time in food and beverage? Sure. I started when I was 18 years old. Uh, I took a cooking class in Santa Rosa, California at the junior college. Actually, it was the program, but it was a two-year cooking program that I uh, kind of accidentally fell into. And then after a year of that, I ended up dropping out. Uh, I actually loved the instructor, but um, I got offered a job. And from what I learned, you know, yeah, on, it, it, this career on the job experience is invaluable. So I started cooking it. I moved back to my home uh, town of Napa, California, and uh, worked at a country club called the Silverado Country Club. Um, I was young, I was hungry, I was taken uh, under the wing of a bunch of different chefs uh, and, you know, it, it kind of taught me how I want to run a kitchen, whereas if somebody shows a propensity to want to learn and uh, quest for knowledge that yeah. lead by example. Uh, and after that, I moved to Santa Cruz, California, worked at a restaurant called Southern Exposure Bistro, where I ended up meeting um, one of my best friends who I moved to Portland with. Uh, who was actually the photographer of our cookbook. And uh, we we spent two years in Santa Cruz and then realized that, uh, the, you know, the, the food scene there wasn't really ever, you know, wasn't, there wasn't that many opportunities for a young cook to to grow and learn. So I moved up to Portland because I couldn't afford San Francisco. And I was lucky enough to land a job at Paley's Place where I spent two more years just, you know, soaking up knowledge, getting my butt kicked, uh, had a great relationship with Vitaly Paley. And then uh, after Paley's, I got offered a job as the opening sous chef of the Gotham Tavern, which was a restaurant that opened in 2005, closed in 2006. Um, there was you know, uh, Naomi, uh, Pomeroy, Tommy Habits. And, uh, and when that kind of suddenly closed, I was left jobless. Mm. Where I, I moonlighted at Nostrana for a couple months and then the opportunity to take over at, as a, I was at the age of 25 and the opportunity to take over a kitchen that was then called Colleen's, which has now become Le Pigeon presented itself. And so I, I took the opportunity and I have been the chef at Le Pigeon for an owner for 17 years now. Amazing. And we've since opened and shut Little Bird Bistro downtown Portland. And we have Canard Restaurant on Burnside right next door to La Pigeon. And we just opened this year, uh, Canard, or last year, 2022 in July, Canard in Oregon City. Congrats on that. Thank it's you. It's a hard time. <laughs> Based on the discussion of sobriety in the industry, when I was in the industry, and I still am, you know, off and on, but I just feel like the shift drink and that time is like a big way in which a lot of industry workers bond and unwind together. Um, and so I guess my question is sort of like, what is your advice for someone hoping to achieve sobriety? Um, like how can they do so without compromising, making these connections or maintaining these connections? And if you believe that those connections are even, um, you know, beneficial or if maybe they're harmful um, to sure. bond that way solely. Sure. Uh, you know, if, if you are somebody whose uh, drug and alcohol use has gotten to you to the point where you need sobriety, then that means that you need to make a change. You don't just get to keep acting the way that you did before, but just remove the drugs and alcohol because addiction is behaviors. It's not just the drugs and alcohol. The addiction yeah. is is the behaviors surrounding the consumption of. So you need to make changes. And some of those changes are drastic and they're hard to wrap your head around. I used to not be able to go home from work without going to the bar first. I, I it was just like, I was, this what that's what I did. I went to the bar and I had a drink. Like it was preposterous to think that I would just go home after a long shift in the restaurant. Um, but getting sober meant that I had, I couldn't do that. Like that, <laughs> I needed to remove myself from that dangerous situation. Um, 
and uh you know getting sober also meant that i didn't you know crack a beer after service and share that shift drink with everybody um i think you know i've, I've been sober for nine and a half years and i think that uh i'm not speaking for everywhere but i think uh, definitely in, in portland you're seeing a little bit more of a cultural change um there's a lot more and every restaurant's culture is different restaurant to restaurant but i see a lot more um drinking of a mineral water or a uh, a non-alcoholic beer or a coke as a shift drink or people that will have like maybe a beer or a glass of wine a couple times a week but then kind of mix it in and not it's not always an alcoholic beverage um, I think things are getting a little bit easier in that sense. Um, but if, you know, if you're grappling with the idea of like, how am I going to make connections with my uh, coworkers if I don't go to the bar after work? I think that what you need to do is sobriety, uh, you, you need to put yourself in your, your mental health first. Yeah. Uh, those connections will be there, but you might need to just, you need to change your habits. Mm -hmm. And so it can be a lonely road. That's why there's, you know, AA, Ben's friends, there's resources, you know, I'm, uh, people reach out to me all the time. They send me messages on Instagram and, you know, there's, there's plenty of, of resources out there. People to talk to, if you get into a group, like an AA group where you come to Ben's friends and you're going to get some phone numbers of people to talk to and find out, you know, some alternative things to do. That being said, yeah. working in the service industry, when you're in that cycle of going out and drinking every night and to reward for a long shift, that's one of the biggest habits you're going to have to break. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of an unplanned question that I just thought of while you were talking. Um, so if you don't know how to answer it, that's fine. But I, I'm just curious because because you're right. Like, um, not only is it like about bonding, and I guess the reason why I thought of that that question specifically is because you did talk about like community and that being like something that you really need, um, in sobriety, but just like the right community. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I am thinking since you, you mentioned, um, not only about community, but like after a shift, it's often, I know that like, personally, I'm like, well, I've been serving people for so long that like, that's just what I want now. I want to be served. I want to go to a bar and, and be able to relax and um, have people worry about me instead. And, and also just to like, I mean, when you work nights, it's also sort of like, um, like what else do you do after work? And, sure. and so I guess I'm just curious, like if you have a go-to um, suggestion for like unwinding after work um, or uh, just rewarding yourself for your shift after your work so that you, you know, engaged with your day. Uh, I, I think that, that when you first get sober, it's about anything but drugs and alcohol. So, uh, you know, if you need to, uh, a couple of things from that question you just asked me. One is um, maybe instead of finding a sense of community after work and rewarding yourself after work, reward yourself because you're trying to embark on this new healthier lifestyle with something that you do before work. A big part of my sobriety has been waking up earlier, more clear headed and exercising and uh, taking care of myself, uh, mm -hmm. physical and mental health before work. Uh, there's plenty of people, like I said, I'm only speaking to my restaurants, but I know there's people that like, you know, go to, you know, go to work out or go to the gym or, you know, there's, there's a, you know, there's a place called the recovery gym. There's two of them in Portland. It's literally for people like a CrossFit classes and stuff for people that want to, you know, get rid of drugs and uh, that are sober. Um, yeah. So you you could find a sense of community and start doing something to uh, to take care of yourself. Get a workout in before work, and if mm -hmm. usually if you get if you do that before work, then when the time comes to be done with work, you're going to be a little bit more tired and want to go home because you have you know gotten up. You haven't slept all the way until a half an hour before your shift, and then woken up, and then you know your night out. So you need to change your cycles. Yeah. The other thing is to um, make a plan. Make sure that you have some sort of self care things for yourself at home when you get off work, so you're not just kind of like lost and wandering. Make sure you have food in the fridge, uh, a show that you want to watch, uh, a, you know, a good book that you're reading. Maybe you play music, whatever it is, an activity. Um, maybe there's find somebody else, uh, you know, that is mm. in the restaurant business that's, um, you know, that's going to be getting off work at the same time. You can hold yourself accountable and be like, hey, I'm going to text you when I'm done so that I don't go to the bar. Um, that, you know, I, I personally, when I work a night shift and I'm up late, like my reward is um, eating something. I can't go to bed now. I used to not be able to go to, 
to bed or go to the ho- uh, home without going to the bar. Now I have to have a meal after my shift. Um, so I make yeah. sure that I have something dialed in at home. Otherwise, I'm stopping at Taco Bell. That being said, yeah. Taco Bell is way better than, you know, <laughs> going <to the> bar. <laughs> going, if you're trying to get sober, Taco Bell is not a bad thing compared to going to the bar and getting fucked up. Yeah. I was also thinking whenever I opted not to go out, I would often get myself ice cream or something as a little. Sure. Treat. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> My next question is about that community that you have emphasized is so important. Um, And you've told us before that you believe that community is a big part about getting sober. And I was just curious if there was a moment that you came to that realization. My first day of attempting sobriety, I had my dad take me to an AA meeting and that's community, right? You're sitting around a group of people who all, um, you know, are in the same boat. And a lot of times I hear people say, well, oh, well, you know, I go to, well, I'm not as fucked up as that person, or I'm not, you know, th- those aren't my type of people. You know, if you're, if you're an alcoholic or a drug user, a drug addict, and you want to get sober, those are your type of people. Mm-hmm. And you don't, you don't, you say, oh, well, there's severity, you know, I, well, hey, I didn't like, I, I haven't been homeless, or I didn't like lose my kids or whatever. It's like, great, learn from those people that did go further than you, Why, you know, they, they learn their lessons. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a, I mean, that's the number one community right there, as far as I'm concerned. And now we're having a more specific, uh, options for community because we have Ben's friends. We have people that are in the food and beverage business. You can go, we meet every Tuesday at 10 AM at Bokeh Bowl, uh, down on water Avenue. You can go and sit around a table of 20 or so people that are all that all know what, what, what your stresses are like, that know the grind, you know, yeah. and, and, and you can experience, you know, how exactly the conversations we're having right now. How do you do it in this business? Cause it's very hard. Ben's friends is an amazing resource, but I think that true sobriety and true recovery uh, happens in Alcoholics Anonymous working in steps. Mm-hmm. Um, and people can be scared of that because it's like a little bit of a bigger deal mm-hmm. but um i think there's a difference between just sobriety and, and recovery sobriety yeah. is uh is is the act of not doing something when i'm sober i'm not using drugs and alcohol but when i'm in recovery i'm doing something for myself it's the act of doing yeah. and like uh, and maybe the difference between like surviving and thriving sure yeah and so when I'm in, when I'm in recovery, when I'm talking to a sponsor, when I'm going to AA meetings, when I'm working the steps, uh, that's my vision of what recovery is. Um, but I, as it pertains to community, Ben's friends is that is, you know, that's an amazing community. Um, and it's, it's like-minded people all showing up together. Um, there's people that get together. Uh, we just, just on Saturday night, I, uh, you know, at the recovery gym, right by La Pigeon, um, there was a, a meeting with three people to talk about creativity and recovery. And I was able to be a speaker. there talking about like, uh, how do I handle create my creativity without drugs and alcohol in recovery? Um, and you know, there was about 30 or 40 people that came together for that. Um, I used to have the run club, the bird dog run club that COVID kind of killed that. And now uh, a third restaurant and kids that are in sports every single night of the week and uh, more, more to do than I know what to, than I have time to do it uh, has kind of, that hasn't gotten back together, but uh, there's a gentleman who is in Ben's friends, who's going to try and carry the torch and uh, I'm going to pass on the, the bird dog run club to him. But I think that um, once you, the, the sobriety part, the not doing is the most important and you need to kind of just give in and give up and, uh, and, and show up and find a, find a, you know, find a group to go to, uh, and it's really hard to do on your own. And if you went, if you go to an AA meeting and it's not for you, then go to a different one. There's tons of different AA meetings happening at tons of different times across the city. And you know, if you went to one restaurant and the meal wasn't good, you wouldn't just say like, mm-hmm. I don't like restaurants. You would say, I yeah. don't like that restaurant. So find a restaurant, find an AA meeting or a group that you like to go to. Raise your hand, speak up because they're going to ask, is there anybody new here? Don't be shy because you say you're new, then people are going to approach you and feel, you know, say, hey, what's going on? How are you? Shake your hand. You're going to be accepted. It's not on you to do that. 
And that's the great way to kind of crack the seal on, on getting into it. And then uh, use the Ben's Friends community. Same thing. Hey, is there anybody new here? Hey, you know, I'm Gabriel. I'm new. I'm checking this out. People are going to come up and say, hey, how you doing? You're going to get some phone numbers. You're going to get invited out to a cup of coffee. And then, you know, you just, if, if, if you need to get sober, if you're in a bad enough place where you need to be at one of these places, then you got to, you know, give it your best. Yeah. So I think I understand from previous conversations that Post has had with you, but just to make sure, Ben's Friends is sort of a community of service industry folk in sobriety, right? So it's yeah. more of a social thing than AA, but it's also more niche. Um, well, it's just, it's the structure of a Ben's Friends meeting is very much that of an AA meeting, except it doesn't have the steps. It, it is less structured. Yeah. You know, you, you come, there's somebody that, that talks. Usually it's me if I'm there, lead, leads uh, for talks about five minutes or so about recovery, um, starts a topic. And then we all, we go around and, you know, it's, you, you share and say, you know, hey, my name is Kevin. I'm an alcoholic. And, you know, so it's, it follows that line of AA uh, very well, but there's not the steps. There's not a big book. And um, there's not the, uh, you know, the God thing keeps a lot of people out of AA. Yeah even though it's not in any way like a, a, a specific, it's not like Buddha or, uh, you know, Christian God or power. anything. But it's at the higher power. Yeah. And for me, the higher power has been a very uh, beautiful thing to, you know, it's put me in touch with my spirituality, not my religious uh, thoughts, but my spiritual thoughts. And um, mm -hmm. just feeling that there's a higher power out there, you know, if I'm, running in the forest and it's you know the sun is coming up and looking up at the trees and feeling like hey, okay this is a higher power or uh you know seeing a beautiful wave break at the beach or you know realizing that sometimes it's nice to realize that we're powerless and that we aren't in control of everything some people have a hard time with that but like when the shit's hitting the fan sometimes and you just look up and you say i some things are out of my control that yeah. is a very freeing thing I would say that as someone who has some religious trauma, I've been to some anonymous meetings and I, and I haven't felt like it's been like something that's been off putting to me. Um, no, I, I would say that nine out of 10 times the uh, people use that as a crutch because they say, I want to get sober. And then, but, I, but I can use this thing as something I, I, the, a reason to not go to AA. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you really are in need, you're like, that someone talking about a higher power if you really really need help someone talking about a higher power is not going to cut you know what i mean like if you yeah. if, if if your heart was if you if you had a, were having a heart attack right and you went and the cardiologist was like talked about a higher power is like oh i'm a christian you wouldn't be like oh well i'm not gonna i don't want to i don't want to be here i do feel like there's an episode of house like that or something but uh, <laughs> Um, so my next question, um, we sort of also briefly talked about like how there are more service industry people getting like an NA beverage for their shift drink. Um, and in general in Portland, there's been a bigger representation of mocktails and just sobriety, not even necessarily for addiction, but maybe for health, um, or a variety of reasons. Um, and I guess I am just curious if you think that that's happening at large within the industry, or if you think that we'll get there? I do think that's happening at large within the industry. I think that the, uh, like, Anthony Bourdain, pirate ship, coke snorting, whiskey drinking, glorification of that life is, uh, people are realizing that that's not sustainable. Yeah. And, I mean, like, if you just, social media has done so many things to make our lives more fucked up, but, like, I think, like, raising awareness that you can live a healthier life and that you can find happiness uh, and making healthier choices with mental health and physical health. And I think that that's just a general trend these days. And, you know, um, I, I mean, I see it all the time. People are just making healthier choices. People are yeah. trying to, not everybody, but it, when does everybody do one thing? Never. But I, I do, I do see that trend. I see it when I travel, I see it. And there's just, there's just a more positive, uplifting culture in uh, restaurants these days. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so my last question is just if you have any parting advice for those who are starting or want to start a journey with sobriety in the industry. Uh, don't be shy. Um, don't be ashamed. It's hard, you know, to say no. Um, and, you know, if you are a, a cook or a server or a dishwasher and you're used to going out and getting drinks and getting messed up with your coworkers, uh, it's hard, it's hard to keep your sobriety anonymous. And you don't have to like scream from the mountaintops, like I'm sober, you know, when you're getting started, but you could just say, Hey, you know, like I'm taking a break. Mm -hmm. Um, but you gotta let those people who you drank with every night know you gotta say something or else it's going to be awkward. And mm -hmm. so you can say, Hey, I'm, I'm taking a break. Um, I, you know, or, or like, you know, I, I feel like I need to make a change in my life. So I'm giving, I'm going to give sobriety a try for a little while. Um, but letting those people know, because if you don't let them know, then they're going to keep constantly be trying to push yeah. good, good, good time drinks. Let's go to the bar. Let's have a shot. Let's have, here's a glass of wine. Here's a this. And so I think like letting people know kind of what's going on with you um, means that you're going to get a little bit pr less pressure. And most people are, uh, at least in the good coworkers are going to respect those decisions that you have. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said before, make a game plan for after work, set yourself up like, Hey, I've got, I'm going to start this, you know, new series house or whatever, <laughs> uh, have some self care stuff. If it's ice cream, if it's a non-alcoholic beer, if it's a, a juice or a, a, you know, a healthy meal and do stuff that makes you feel good, you know, could put good in your body. Uh, and replace the good with the bad. Uh, even if it's, you know, like I said, ice cream is a much better substitute than a half a bottle of whiskey. You're going to wake up feeling better after a pint of Ben and Jerry's than you will after a pint of Old Crow. I can guarantee that. And yeah. just start, you know, do some things for yourself. And also give yourself grace, you know, know that things are going to be a little bit hard, that it's going to be tough. And then you, you just, you know, it can be hard, but there's tons of us out there that are doing it that suffer from the same, uh, you know, malady. And um, don't be shy to go to a meeting and raise your hand and get it. When someone gives you their number in a meeting, it, they mean give me a call if, if you need help, because uh, that's part of their program is to help you out. So those would be my, my suggestions. Awesome. Well, thanks so much again. Um, it's been an really a pleasure. We're really grateful that you were willing to join us and talk about this, especially considering that that's been mostly what we've talked to you about. And we also want you to know that we we really appreciate all of your culinary accomplishments in Portland. But sobriety just seems like a big conversation right now. Um, sure. And it seems like something that people in the industry especially struggle with. So. Well, thanks thank for all you, you so guys much. do for us too. Yeah. Have a well, great morning. Nice meeting with you. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.